Welcome. This is a lecture series for 8th grade English language arts. Please have a paper and pencil ready to take notes. It is very important that you take notes during the series. After you watch this lecture, then you can move to a worksheet and practice with your teacher. You can then take an assessment to ensure that you have mastered the standard. So what standard are we going to cover today? Today we're going to look at an Oklahoma standard 8.2.R.1 where students will summarize and paraphrase ideas while maintaining meaning in a logical sequence of events with and between text. We will also be looking at 8.2.R.3 where students will generalize main ideas with supporting details in a text. If you are not from the state of Oklahoma, you will probably find your standards that are similar about summarizing and paraphrasing ideas. Let's look at definitions. Let's first look at these three definitions of summary, paraphrase, and generalization. I'm going to ask you to now pause your video and take notes of these definitions so that you will have them to refer back to in your notes. Please pause the video now and restart the video after you have taken these notes. Okay, welcome back. So a summary is like a brief statement or account of the main points of something. It's like if you went to a party and your friend the next day asked you what happened at the party. You might make a specific summary of the party giving facts about it. This is not a place for your opinion or background knowledge or personal information. You would give the exact fact information. Perhaps you would give a summary of the decorations or a summary of how people were dressed or the location. Paraphrasing. This is when you read something. Think of paraphrasing as a shortened form. It's expressing the meaning of something written or spoken using different words. You're not using the exact same words. You're taking something someone said and saying it a little bit differently while maintaining the same meaning of paraphrasing what they've said. Generalization. This is when you make a general statement about the main idea. You will find a main idea in your reading and then you can make a general statement about what it is about for the main idea. How to summarize. Let's talk about how to summarize. If you could, please pause this video and take the notes on how to summarize. So when we are talking about summarizing, the first thing we have to do is actually read the text. Sometimes we think we can skim through and get what we want from it, but we really need to take the time to actually read the assignment. Then we're going to ask ourselves, what was this text about? Like a book. What was the book about? What could I tell somebody about this book? How could I summarize this? Think of it in your mind first, and then write a few sentences with only the major ideas and necessary information. Keep in mind that this is something you can do in your brain first before you put it on paper. What if you read a book that you really enjoyed, and your best friend asked you to recommend a good book? Then you would want to tell them about the book you just read. You wouldn't want to tell them every single detail of the book. You would want to give them the main facts and ideas and kind of keep the order of how things happened in the book. You would only include essential information. It is not likely you will tell them the best part of the book and tell them how it ends. You want them to read it for themselves. What is a method that we can use? How about SWBST? This is usually used with narrative text. Somebody wanted, but so then. SWBST. Please pause the video and take notes on somebody wanted, but so then. Great. So 
when we read a narrative text, such as a short story or a novel, we could say at the top of our paper, SWBST. This acronym will help us to think through and summarize what exactly happened in the novel. Somebody. Who's the main character? Wanted. What did that main character want? But what was the problem? So, how did the character try to solve the problem? And then, what was the resolution to the story? Somebody wanted, but so then. SWBST. Remember this acronym when you go to summarize mainly narrative text. Let's practice. Let's practice on this nursery rhyme. I'm going to read it out loud, pause the video, and do the SWBST on your paper. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Up came the sun and dried up all the rain, and the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. Pause the video now and perform the SWBST on your own. So what did you write on your paper? Who was the main character? Was it the spider? What did the spider want? He wanted to climb up the water spout. But what was his problem? His problem was the rain. How did the character try to solve the problem? Well, the sun came out, and so the sun dried him out. That was the resolution to the story. Then he was able to climb up the water spout. So if you're going to take an Oklahoma standardized test, you're going to probably be asked to answer a multiple choice question. So in your mind, you now have the SWBST, what the story was about. So pause this video and look and choose which answer you think is right, A, B, C, or D. Which answer best fits the summary of this nursery rhyme? Which one did you choose? If you chose A, then that would be the correct one. Notice that we had two sentences for the summary. A summary does not have to be in one sentence. Why did we choose A? Because it mainly focused on the spider, what he was about, what his problem was, and what the resolution was. Keep in mind, if you look at the SWBST, then you will know what the answer should be. Let's move on to paraphrasing. How to paraphrase. Please pause the video and write down the definition of how to paraphrase. When you're ready, press play again. So when we talk about paraphrasing, first we're going to read the passage. We're not going to skim, we're going to actually read until we understand the content. There is a difference between reading the words and understanding the content. When you read a passage, stop and think, do I know what this is about? Then look away from the passage and restate it in your own words in your mind. If you're in a testing situation, you want to take your time with this. It may help to do this verbally if you're alone at home or in school working with a peer. If you're in a testing situation, you want to do it in your mind. Then you can write it down. But you need to make sure you understand exactly what's going on in the passage. Let's do a practice. We have a passage here. Notice that it is referenced at the bottom where it came from. I'm going to read it out loud to you first. Grizzly bears are majestic symbols of the wild. Bears live in and use a variety of habitat types, playing important roles in each one. This makes them an umbrella species. 
meaning that when we protect them and their habitat, we also protect many species. Grizzly bears can also help ecosystems by distributing seeds and nutrients through their scat and occasionally regulating ungulate populations. Did you see any words in here you did not know? It is very difficult to paraphrase when we do not understand the content. Please pause the video and look up any words in this passage you do not know. Did you look up the word ungulate? Did you find out what it means? It means a hoofed mammal. So grizzly bears occasionally help regulate hoofed mammal populations by eating them. So if you look up a word you know, it will help you to paraphrase better. Let's look at the passage with a question. Please pause the video, read the question, and choose the answer that best paraphrases the passage. Which answer did you choose? Did you choose C? This one best paraphrases the passage. Is it true that one of the others, A, B, or D, sort of paraphrased? Yes, they sort of did. But it didn't give the best paraphrase. Pay attention to the questions that you are asked as well. We have another passage we're going to read. I'm going to let you read this one on your own. Please pause the video to read this passage on your own. When you are finished, please press start. Make sure you understand what this passage is about. The next few slides are going to be practice of generalization of this passage. So we're looking at generalization with supporting evidence. If you need to reread the passage after you read the question, just hit the back button for a little bit and you can read the passage again. Remember when you read a passage, you need to stop and think about it for just a minute to make sure you understand what it is about. So read this question and find out which statement seems most likely to be a good generalization of the weather story. Pause the video and choose your answer. Did you choose B? B is the best generalization with supporting evidence. We saw the evidence within the passage and this is a good generalization of what the story was about. So what did we learn today? What did we talk about? We looked at summarization, paraphrasing, and generalization. We talked about these skills, we wrote down the definitions, and we practiced them. Now it's time for you to practice them with assignments from your teacher or your textbook and then for you to take an assessment to ensure that you have mastered them. Thank you for joining me today. Have a great day. See you for the next video.